welcome to Life on the Fringe. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how we had to plan our wedding during the midst of the pandemic and we only had about a month and a half to plan the whole thing. Uh, but I'm a perfectionist and I wanted it to look like we had totally planned to do it this way in a small intimate setting uh, from the get-go. So I'm going to be walking you through some of the products I found on Amazon, uh, linking to videos that I thought were useful in the description, as well as um, generally talking about ideas for what you can do to plan for your wedding um, that's not going to cost you that much money, um, that can help you make your wedding wars pandemic friendly. <coughs> what? An excellent intro. So um, I didn't want to just talk about my wedding from my perspective, so I also wanted to include my partner's perspective on our wedding. So what did you think was the best part of our having to plan basically a brand new wedding? What, <laughs> is there a best part for like, what was your last minute what was changes? Your, what was your favorite part of the new ceremony? Like stuff we hadn't include, we had, we weren't going to be able to include, but that we included. Uh, well, I really liked the outdoor setting for the ceremony. That was really nice. Right. Uh, what does it, does that answer the question? This is an open ended question. If it <laughs> answers it, if you feel it answers it. Well, yeah. Okay. So that. That was a change that we hadn't planned for, um, and I think that it turned out almost as if we had planned it, you know. Um, there were some aspects that were, uh, like taking chairs from the kitchen and stuff like that, those were a little bit, uh, like, something that you would not have planned for, but you don't notice it in the end, you know. Everybody has a place to be, and everybody was dressed to the nines in the backyard, uh, it was fantastic, a really, really nice uh, put together ceremony. And that could have been in any circumstance without the pandemic, just as beautiful. Right. And that's what I think I want to emphasize in this video is it may not be the wedding that you dreamed of originally, but I do think you can still make a pandemic wedding beautiful and, and in a way more intimate um, than you'd originally planned. So, do you want to ask me the question back? What was your favorite thing about a rush job wedding? <laughs> well, let me tell you. <laughs> Put it that way, um, I actually really like planning, so I, I didn't, I mean, it was stressful, but I didn't really mind planning basically two weddings, because our plan right now is to we postponed everything. All of our vendors are really great about it to this coming June. But, you know, we might be planning another pandemic wedding. Um, so we're coming up with backup ideas for that wedding, which I'll talk about later. But my favorite thing about the new ceremony was, like you said, the ceremony itself as opposed to the reception. Um, we were going to get married in a Catholic ceremony, we're both Catholic, and so it was going to be this very traditional, formal thing, which I, which I still really think is beautiful and I'm really looking forward to it, and we've saved our sacrament of marriage to next year. Um, so this year we just got legally married, but not sacramentally married, um, but because we were doing it in our backyard, my uncle, um, shout out to Uncle Matt, uh, was able to officiate the wedding, and we wrote our own vows. I picked out all the readings. Um, my sisters were able to give, like, one of my sisters gave the homily, one gave the introduction, your sister gave a toast, as well as part of the readings. It was just a very cool way to make it like the combining of two families and we did a unity candle like the ceremony was my favorite part basically yeah cool we agree yeah what was your like least favorite part of the new wedding well yeah on the flip on the flip side 
the reception left a lot to be desired. And I think we feel pretty similarly about that where it stinks that you can't dance together. It stinks that no, there's no like mingling. The, the bar aspect is a little limited as well, which isn't a big problem, but like it adds being able to go back and forth or socialize there. There were like more places where you can socialize in a reception hall that make it more of a, uh, experience as opposed to kind of a, it almost felt like an, an event that was a bit frozen, a bit stuck. Um, the timing of certain things was a little difficult to manage. Yeah, it felt like a tea the way we had it, where it was like an afternoon tea. Yeah. Like beautiful reception, a lovely dinner. My whole neighborhood, I cannot give enough credit to for coming together. Yeah, they did an amazing job. And making our wedding possible and beautiful. And it was, and that was what was so special about it, was it was so community-driven, um, which was really, really nice and special. But yeah, I would agree. The, the part, I think, to me that was the worst was not having like the dancing or the like the party part of a wedding and my family is huge so it was also disappointing that a lot of my family couldn't come and we couldn't do our a lot of our family traditions um so we're trying to figure out ways to do those things in a pandemic friendly way if we need to for this June. Hopefully we won't need to do it, but if we do, I want to have a plan that can incorporate more people um, in a safe way. Um, okay, any other things you want to mention about this wedding that you thought was positive or cool or negative? Mm. It was, it was really nice, the elements that we were still able to preserve, that they were still there. So, like, you still had your dress. I still had my suit, mm -hmm. my tux. Um, and the bridesmaids still wore, had their dresses. Mm -hmm. That was pretty, it still added this element of the, the formal formality of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Andrea, Andrea mm -hmm. coming through. Yeah, I with... Yeah, our photographer, she did a fantastic job. You'll see some of those pictures at some point during this video. I should link her. Link yeah, her in the, yeah. And I'll link her in the description. <laughs> if you're in the Northwest Indiana, Chicagoland area, totally recommend. Right. Those are some great photos. Um, and then also, you still had your masta trolley. Yes, true. I still have the food I wanted. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that was a lifesaver is we actually planned to have artificial flowers at our original. Ah, wedding. yeah, that's right. Um, and my godmother like is a florist and she's an amazing florist. So she had been working on arranging all of our stuff for the big wedding. So we were able to actually use our artificial flowers for this ceremony. And that added a whole level of beauty and elegance to I want to say the hall but the that, yard yeah um the event the event um and we're gonna be able to use those next year and that'll be cool and then we'll get to use some of them like in our home as decorations because they're artificial like that's a huge pro tip I feel like if you're planning a wedding right now and you're not sure if you're gonna to have to cancel to the pandemic, buy artificial flowers, have them made that you could use them at your real event or use them at your uh, smaller event, pandemic event. Cause you could use them twice if you still wanted to do your big ceremony, but just later, like huge pro tip. Didn't need to buy flowers twice. Saved us so much money, I can't even, and they looked You'll see in the photos. I think they look great. You may disagree, but for me, I think they were very nice. Yeah. And um, I guess the other part that was difficult about having the wedding in the pandemic, like I said, the family not all being able to come, but 
also our friends. Right. Like, our friends live mostly on the East Coast, some on the West Coast. We live on the East Coast. We had the wedding in Indiana, because that's where I'm from. So it was really hard to, like, not have people our age, like, besides our siblings, at the wedding. That was tough. Um, but if you, like, live where your wedding is, presumably your friends live there as well, so that might not be a problem for you. But it, it was a bummer for us. I think that captures most of the sentiment. Yeah. And, I'll, and like I said, I'm going to be diving into the planning part, or I dove into the planning part. I'm not sure how I'm ordering this yet. Just like the wedding, it is very thrown together and planned, but not. <laughs> but you wanted to do a twirl, right? Yes. So I put together, this was my wedding pandemic dress. I had my regular dress that I wore for the ceremony, but I wasn't going to be wearing it like the whole day because I didn't want to get ruined and I'm wearing it next year. So I got this dress on Amazon and I think it is perfect for like garden weddings and stuff. So let me go over here and give a little twirl. So it's floor length as you can see. It's like flowy. It's very like, you know, history kind of bohemian. Do can do a little pan up. A little pan. Look at that. Wow. It's got this little split. Makes it easy for walking. You know. oh, I'm not really looking at the split. Okay, there we go. Just the split. It's easy for walking. Um, for a beach wedding, like it was not expensive. I'm amazed it looks this good. I didn't have it tailored at all because I didn't have any time. So it's a little bit kind of looser. And it also didn't come with any pads, like, for the boobs. But you can add those, like, insert ones if you want to. I'm just, I'm part of the Itty Bitty Titty community, so I didn't really feel the need. I've never heard of that. No? <laughs> no. I'm pretty sure it's from a movie. The Itty Bitty Titty Committee? Committee or community? Committee. Committee? Itty Bitty Titty Committee. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't feel the need. But, yeah, and then this from the back, and like I said, it's just like, very cool, it's got a little bit of cutout here, you can adjust how deep you want it, because it's got adjustable straps, so, I will link this in the description as well, um, along with the other products that I recommend from Amazon, but yeah, this is my dress, you'll see it in the photos. I'm not going to be showing photos of my other dress because, like I said, I'm wearing it next year. And, you know, I don't want, like, my family who didn't come this year to see it yet because I want to be surprised. But, yeah, okay. Um, let's jump into it. Okay, um, so now we are going to go through some of the products I found that helped create the garden wedding of my pandemic dreams. So the first thing was I really wanted it to look planned, um, like I had always intended it to be a garden wedding. So one thing that I did was I didn't want to buy a bunch of like tables. My family has a lot of like folding tables and stuff. I didn't want to invest in like nice tables or rent nice tables. I just wanted to cover existing tables so that they all matched. Um, so to do that, I bought a bunch of tablecloths. So specifically this design, beautiful flowers along the bottom and it just comes in a variety of sizes. That's one thing that um, is important when you're thinking about tablecloths. Uh, we had some round tables, we had some rectangular tables, we had square tables, bigger tables, smaller tables. This tablecloth came in a range of sizes. So when you're looking to have everything match, make sure that your 
Design comes in the amount of sizes that you need for your wedding. Um, so let's go back. Okay, so the other thing that we bought was placemats. Um, and we didn't use them as placemats in the sense that you put your plate on them. What we used them for was to go underneath the vases at the center of each table. And it really added a nice dimension to the design. Uh, it took up a little more space. It added more of my color scheme. Because as you saw, the tablecloths were a bunch of different colored flowers. All of the flowers in my wedding were purple and white because that's the color theme of my wedding, purple, white, and green, like a, I think it's called seagrass green. Um, and I wanted to highlight purple as the color. And so I did that by using these placemats that went with the color theme of the wedding. And they come in like packs so I only had to buy one of them and I was able to put one on each of the tables. So that was a very like cheap way to really elevate the design. This item, such a good deal. Jamie Wolfer always talks about how something that you don't need at weddings are wedding favors. I disagree. I love getting little wedding favors and seeing like what they are when I go to weddings. Um, but you don't want to spend like a million dollars. And one of her rules is that they need to be practical, that you can use them. Um, these are that. And they come in that cute little box, um, which I just absolutely love. Uh, it's got this cute saying on the inside, you know, it's like lovebirds, you know, and they're salt and pepper shakers. Like, how cool is that? Let me see if it says, yeah, you open it, it looks like this. You can just put them right on the plates. Unfortunately, you can't um, change the ribbon color, but what we did is I just took the ribbon off and then put a little purple ribbon on, I think. Or I may have just left it, because honestly, it's a, it's a pandemic wedding. It can't, it's not gonna be perfect. It's just going to be beautiful. So these were like a great deal. I had, I got 20 of these for um, like 20 sets for $33.99. Are you kidding me? It, it literally is just over a dollar per thing. And they are quality, like excellent deal. Um, and people took them with them. We didn't have like leftovers. It's just a good little like gift for guests. Again, for any wedding, but we already had made other favors for our like, not our real wedding, but our big wedding um, for this coming June. And so we wanted to get something like special and nice for the people who came to this one and separate from the stuff we made for next year. This item on our list is this Here Comes the Bride um, little heart. Um, and then on the back it says, and they lived happily ever after. And I've, I think I've seen this from other YouTubers as well, like wedding wedding people who put together Amazon hauls before. Um, we used it because our flower girls were not able to make it to our pandemic wedding because they are, uh, they don't live in Indiana. So instead we used my dog as the flower boy and this was able, he's a little copper spaniel, it was able to fit around his neck, it wasn't too heavy. Um, and he looked so gosh darn cute coming up the aisle. And that's another thing that we would not have been able to do, like include him at all in our like planned wedding. And we were able to do that in this one. So that was a big positive for me in this, in this wedding because he is family and I love him to death. Um, you'll definitely be seeing a picture of him wearing this. It's very cute.
Okay, so this product, um, a just married sign, again, useful for pandemic and non-pandemic weddings. Uh, we put it on the back of our car um, and we drove off to take our like couples pictures at the beach. So we drove from our house to the beach and then took our photos and there's some photos of us like with it with the sign like on the car um it's not necessary like if you're trying to save money like you don't need this and you can obviously like diy it too um but again i had a month and a half i didn't have time to diy this was not that expensive and again it was just a little extra detail that made it feel planned i think that's the hardest part about throwing together a pandemic wedding is to make it feel planned um because you don't want it to look like a grad party you want it to look like a wedding you know at least that's my opinion a hot, a hot take so this item is a unity candle and my parents had a unity candle at their wedding but it's not typical in Catholic ceremonies, which is what our original plan was. But we were gonna to ask to include it anyway, because I think it's a beautiful representation of two families coming together as one. So the way that this works is a representative from each side of the family, so we did our moms, light the little candles, and then they give it to their child. And then together, me and my partner lit the larger candle with the two little candles, signifying the unification of our families. And it was beautiful to me. I love the symbology behind it. And it was a way to add this like ritualistic element to the wedding because like I'm, I'm Catholic. Our weddings are like an hour to an hour and a half long. And there's a lot of ceremonial steps in them. And to go from that to a yard wedding where, you know, the readings are quick, the homily is quick, we wrote our own vows. Like, I like formal ceremonies. And this added just that touch of formal symbolism um, that we wanted. And I just think it was really perfect. Uh, now, I, these candles were beautiful. I will say they turned out beautiful. They shipped well and everything, but they melted like so fast. I was kind of planning on like keeping them like the way you keep a baptismal candle. You can't keep these like you light them and they melt. Um, so I will say that about this product, but I think the idea is still cool. And if you don't really care about keeping it anyway, it's a beautiful candle. Okay, so if you need a, if you want a Unity candle, you need a Unity candle holder. This one fit just fine. So there you go. Put them together, bam, that's all I have to say about this. Okay, I cannot say enough positive things about these little slippers. I did have to sew them to make them fit my feet, because I have tiny feet, but I was outside, like in the grass and then on the beach and then just like chilling in my house. I wore my heels that I planned on wearing down the aisle and for the ceremony and then I immediately switched into these because I'm not wearing like my white shoes in the grass and then staining them before my wedding next year. No. And they're like, it, these are so comfy. I'm a barefoot person. like. I'm from Indiana, like, I'm barefoot most of the summer. Like, this was my comfort state, and I got a lot of compliments on these. My mom and grandma hated it. They thought it was so tacky, but I loved them. Everybody else seemed to like them. Like, if you're doing something outside, I would recommend looking into something like this. So... Okay, I can't, for whatever reason, find in my orders the one that I ordered, but I ordered an aisle runner to make the aisle look nicer. 
I don't think I would recommend this for an outdoor wedding. Like I know it adds some aesthetic before you start walking, but it was so hard to walk on. And then uh, my bridesmaid's heels got like stuck. Like it punctured through the aisle runner. I just don't know that it was worth it. You know, I don't think it was worth it. So, if you want one, have one, I don't recommend it. So I wanted to show you some of the Amazon products in action. So um, this is the Lilac um, table runner being used. These are the artificial flowers I was talking about being used. We're using them again next year. Uh, God bless my godmother because she is an artist. Um, here's the Unity Candle, Unity Candle Holder. We bought this little sunflower tablecloth also on Amazon to go at the front of our aisle. You'll see some zoomed out pictures later. Um, like here. So yeah, we had this archway which our neighbor uh, let us borrow. We used tool that we just had that my grandma's been keeping and we've basically used it at every family wedding for like the past 50 years. So we used some of it here and then this garland we were going to use for next year's wedding. So we just put that on there. Uh, we had the wicker furniture already so that looked good. And then the one, uh, here's the aisle runner which regrets. Um, but I didn't talk about this, but for the wicker furniture, I wanted it to still be color coordinated to the wedding because I'm a perfectionist. So we ordered uh, little pillow covers for the pillow pillows on these. So we got purple, we got this green color, and we got this like cool, like different, unique lavender one. Um, and if you see in my living room and other videos, we use these covers still, uh, the green ones for our living room. So they're not going to waste and my mom has stolen the purple ones. Uh, so all of it is being reused, a good investment. Um, and again, just taking it and elevating it a little bit. So this is the setup from afar. Um, we used chairs. I wanted to use real chairs instead of folding chairs to save the elegance of the event. So we literally just used the kitchen chairs we have and my grandma's kitchen chairs and although they don't match each other they match enough in a mismatchy way to still be elegant and nice and purposeful not thrown together. Um, and then we had assigned seating. The chairs were six feet apart. Um, the people who sat next to each other were people who were living together, so they didn't need to be six feet apart. But the chairs were six feet apart, like the, wa the, the aisle was six feet apart, and then the chair back to the front of the chair behind it was six feet apart, trying to keep it as, like I said, COVID friendly as possible. Um, and then people just moved their chairs to their assigned seats at their table. And then the chairs at the tables all would match each other. And the tables we arranged so that people who were quarantining together sat at the same table and people who weren't quarantining together sat at different tables. Um, just again, minimizing contact. Uh, it did interfere with mingling a little bit, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Some things you just can't risk. So here again, a zoomed out version. This is where our officiant sat. Um, there's another chair on this side, uh, again, six feet apart, where my sister's alternated seating, sitting, uh, depending on who was gonna talk or if they were gonna play music. And then we had these bottles, uh, these lights 
we put those up on the tree that was the center of all of the tables. A just nice little touch. The unity candle. So yeah, that's how we had our yard set up. And something you didn't see um, in the pictures was we, to block out like the street, we took little like those flower rods, those like shepherd's hooks, and hung potted flowers from them um, along the edge of our property that bordered the street, just to put something between other houses and our yard. So it's just an idea as well. And last but not least of these ceremony pictures, our precious flower boy, Buddy, who gracefully went down the aisle, accompanied by my mom, looking his cutest. What a great pupper. He's not a pupper, he's a senior dog, but a great pupper at heart and in spirit. Uh, but yeah, I just think he, he, he might have been one of my favorite things uh, about doing it this way because obviously we couldn't include him in like our mass wedding, um, like Catholic mass, but totally can include him in a yard wedding. And man, am I so happy that he was able to be a part of our special day because he's special to me and he was in my life before my partner. So it's only fitting. Okay, so I wanted to conclude um, by showing you some of our wedding pictures um, of us in my reception pandemic dress, um, just because I think it's cute. And also to highlight the skills of my photographer, again, not sponsored, but highly recommend, and I'm linking her below. And again, this dress, hmm, apparently it just hit puberty. This dress, um, I just got off Amazon, so. And this picnic blanket, I also purchased off of Amazon. And I specifically bought it in purple for the wedding, but I have been using it all pandemic. So we picnic all the time now, since going outside um, is one of the safer activities you can do. So a great investment. Uh, and we'll be using it for photos next year as well. So something we can reuse um, and then just use in our regular life. And here is a picture of my reception dress. Um, I just really like this picture. I like how it's rolling with the waves and I don't know. I just think it's very like artistic and cool. I don't know. But if you have uh, any comments tips from your pandemic wedding or questions and you're trying to plan your pandemic wedding, feel free to leave them below. Uh, and I'd love to hear from you guys. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video about our wedding in the pandemic. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you didn't find it that useful, hopefully at least it was entertaining. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be linking Jamie Wolfer's uh, channel below, and she has excellent uh, videos about wedding planning. I definitely recommend her channel, um, ways to do, have a friendly, a budget-friendly wedding. But anyhow, uh, so this was Life on the Fringe. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe and click the notification bell so you get all of my uploads. And I'll see you next time. And most importantly, have a good day. Bye. Can we get two party boxes, please? Okay. And that's it. Huh? Your song. Uh, let's do soft. Uh, actually, can we do one soft and one crunchy? And then that's it. Thank you.